well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Well, today we're going to be working on our Lombard Lightning. It's a 68.8 cc or 69 cc, we'll call it. And got it running not too long ago, did a video on it. But had a safety chain on it, and it's like new, but it's got these huge rakers on it, I explained in, the, in that video on it. Uh, I really like running this saw, and so got a sprocket nose bar on it I want to so I can do bore cuts in with it and you can't do bore cuts with these so I'm gonna put a new chain on it and I know that the clutch drum is really worn on it too so we'll be right back after we get it apart okay well I've got the nut loose on it this one the thread is just a normal thread most of the saws that I've worked on have a left hand thread which you take them off backwards And get in here and you can see the pretty heavy wear in there. You know the tooth is cut down. Get it in the light there so you can see it cut down here and it's also cutting down in the face there. The other thing too is if you look at the all the grease in here and stuff you know that's from using the wrong kind of bearing grease. A lot of people put too light of stuff on it and that's what this is. It gets hot and it slings out. And a lot of older saws, the actual shoe that rides in here to engage it has a lining on it like the, some of the bigger stills and some of the older home lights and whatnot like that. All that grease goes right into that face. It's like a brake lining. It glazes over and makes it not work very good. So it's real important to use the right stuff on these. This has got quite a bit in it. See all that ick in there. So anyway, we've got a new drum, clutch drum for it. And this is made by the Windsor Company. And Windsor was a big supplier of bars and sprockets and stuff in the older days. And they made most of the bars for McCulloch and man they just the best. They last forever. But uh, the only problem with them, they're kind of heavy, so if you get a heavy saw like I usually use, it adds to the weight. But um, you know, most of this stuff like this is made in China today and it's not any good really. But that's good stuff. Well anyway, I've got a new chain here, a 38050 skip tooth. One thing on these chains, you know, the, this old chain I have here is kind of different from the newer ones. A couple of pro guys called and said, you know, sent me messages saying that you're calling this a full chisel chain, but it's not a square cut. It's a round tooth. And so anyway, that's what they call semi chisel today. But this stuff is old enough that even the old books call it full chisel and the tooth is rounded slightly but it's also a lot more square than the new stuff that they sell so that's why I, so many of my old saws cuts again it's got the same old chain on it here and it up with a whole roll of it but anyway uh, we'll put to get the clutch serviced here so there's the bearing and then there's a plate here so you always want to clean behind here around where the seal is and put a little light lubricant on there and on this side too so anyway I'll get the bearing greased and be right back well, this is unusual it's got a sleeve inside the bearing that fits on the crank so we need to put a little bit of grease on that and I also need to lube the shaft here Anyway, I'll get this installed and I'll be right back. Get this washer here, put it on first. I'll be right back. Okay, well we've got the clutch drum on, spins nice and free. 
Now what we want to do is clean the plates here, which I've done behind them and stuff, and the outer one too. And so now we're gonna check the bar here, and I've checked it. The guides on it, the rails here are plenty good, so I don't need to run it through the thing there. But you can see all the it coming out of those. And then, you know, of course the oiler holes here have to be cleaned too. That's where the oil comes in from the chainsaw and lubes the bar. Now we use brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner here to get all the ick out of there. And then the sprocket here, I've lubed it before so it's still good, but you know if you're servicing your bar, it's got the little hole here. And special little grease gun here. Be right back. Okay, well, we're ready to assemble the chain. We'll come over here and do a close up of it. I've got it all set on here. Well, right here is the new Master Link, and I recommend you go back and watch one of my older videos. We'll put a link to it on how to build chains and whatnot. But basically, this is what pushes against the rivet and then you spin this and it rounds the rivet head over and then we want to put a needle nose pliers on here to keep it together so it doesn't come out so you put a little bit of tension on it here Keep doing that till the resistance gets to the point where it's too much and you don't want to do it too far because you'll pinch the rivet and then the chain won't move. So that's about right. That's the end of it right there. Take that out. Yeah, see how nice that rivet came out there? So there's the other one. We'll get that out and get that done too. Now the thing that I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put the new chain on the saw today. Okay, like I say, I'm not going to put the new chain on today. I'm going to put the old one because what I want to do is when I get a tree down, I'll do some cookies with this chain and then we'll do a brand new chain and see how much difference there is between a safety chain and a standard chain. So, anyway, we'll be right back with some good BS. Okay, well, you've heard my adage. One man's junk is somebody else's better junk. I picked this up at an estate. They just gave it to me. I thought, you know, it's really Art Deco and neat. So, I said, well, let's plug it in. It's an air compressor. It works. So, I'm going to clean it up and paint it. In my, uh, I'm building an uh, area in my shop strictly for working on chainsaws and small engines. So I'm going to have this on the end of the bench. I'll just have the air hose there. So if I'm drilling or make a mess, I can just use this and blow all the crap out. So, well, this was an old Craftsman branded. It's not made by them. It's probably a Devilbus, I believe. But anyway, air compressors like this are nice. You can use them for painting, low pressure, and stuff like that because they have a diaphragm in them and they don't have any oil coming out of them or water like on a regular compressor. They have relatively low pressure. But it's ideal for low pressure painting, cleaning off your bench, and cleaning off tools and whatnot. So, anyway, good stuff. One man's junk is somebody else's better junk. Finish his best. We'll see you in the next video.